Now, 95.9 FM WATD presents Friends with Benefits, exploring relationships, social issues, and life stories. Be a part of the show at 781-837-4900. Friends with Benefits with your host, Brian Stratton. Welcome aboard. Brian Stratton here, Friends with Benefits 95.9 WATD. And um, we're just uh, getting into the swing of things. We're in the fall. We have Gabe. Gabe, how are you? Good, Brian, as always. Good to see you. Yep, Gabe on the round table. And we have Tony after a long, long hiatus, a couple weeks. You have not been on the air. No, I've been uh, moving and packing my restaurant and uh, getting ready to move into my new place. So, What's I've the new address? Busy. I'm sorry. It is going to be 416 Plymouth Street in Halifax, Mass. And that is located in the Rockland Trust Plaza, right next to the fire department. Okay, so and, and it's Bella's? It is going to be Bella's Pizza and More. And More, which is Route mm-hmm. 106. Which is Route 106. That is correct. Excellent. Well, it's good to have you back on the show. I mean, we gotta we gotta brief you and get you back up to date since your two week hiatus. Uh, last week, uh, Gabe and I and Paul Kearney uh, were all on the round table talking about. Um, there's a new movie out that just this year that came out. I found this thing from complete coincidence. Uh, going through um, YouTube, mm-hmm. I, I put in parental alienation, and I know you know what that is, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah um, we talked about that uh, a little while ago. We've talked a here and there about it yeah. quite a bit. And uh, on the right came up, this movie said Divorce Corp with Dr. Drew, who you know Dr. Drew, of course, the famous Dr. Drew from the West Coast from the, what was that uh, show, Live, yeah, Lovin', that, Love Line, Love Line. Love, love Line, line. Right, yes. Right. Well, it was hil- hilarious with that Adam pretty Carolla. Funny. Yeah. But he's a very astute um He's well, a document. therapist, a yeah. smart guy. It's a doctor. It's a doctor, right. So he was uh, the narrator of this movie, and um, I saw a bunch of trailers. I started going through them, and I was totally captivated, mm-hmm. completely captivated. And um, it just hit child support. It hit uh, parent alienation. It hit uh, lawyers, judges, the whole nine yards. So um, I took the, took the mechanical process to kind of find more out about this, and I did. I, I saw the movie. I watched it four times in like two days. Right. Mm. And it was amazing. We talked at length uh, through the trailers last week. Yeah, last week. Those trailers, I mean, one woman says she was married for four months and her divorce took six years. Right. I mean, it's crazy. And she lost custody of her kids, too, which is uh, parental alienation goes both ways. I mean, in the rest of the country, parental alienation is, is a divided thing. But, you know, of course, in Massachusetts and some in New England, you've got to do something very badly if you're a mother to lose your, your children. Child, right? Yeah. I mean, you've got to go the whole nine yards. Oh yeah, you got to be a real drug addict. Wall, yep. Drug addict. Or, or, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Leaving, going, going on a vacation and leaving them in the house. Yeah. The courts defend. always lean towards the mother. But if you look throughout the rest of the country, it's kind of there's some there's some equity there. Huh. It, it goes both ways. Um, and tonight we're going to have um, the director. Of the movie, uh, Joseph Soje. He's is he on the line? Hi, Joe. I there? am. I am. Is this Brian? This is Brian. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Thanks for sh- joining the show tonight. Um, excited to have you on. And uh, say hello to Gabe and Tony. Hello, Gabe and Tony. How are you? Good. Hi, how are you Joseph, doing? How are you? So, Fabulous. So this is um and and by the way the phone number is 781-837-4900 once again 781-837-4900 or simply email cta management at rocketmail.com cuz we are on live folks tonight. So if you have any questions, comments, whatnot, um we got to start. It's always, you know, I was thinking about this interview and it's so hard to start, Joe. It's hard to start because there's so much. So we're where do we begin on this thing? Where do we begin on this this ride? You are a uh, a native uh, native of New Jersey that right. that went to college at Harvard, MIT and Harvard, right? I was there. Yes, I was. And what what is your, what was your former profession? Well, I was um, I was a molecular biologist. Um, I actually trained as an MD and didn't go into clinical practice because I was curious about things, and so I 
studied molecular biology, and I happened to be at a good place at the right time, and um, uh, the biotechnology revolution came along, and I jumped on that and <clears throat> started a company and did pretty well. And then about seven years ago, I said, okay, enough, enough science for a while. I want to try something new. And, you know, the luxury of living longer these days is we get to have a couple of careers. And so um, I decided to go into the entertainment business, and uh, it's been very interesting. What was your divorce, Joseph? My divorce was in uh, around 2000, and frankly, I didn't end up as uh, badly as, as many of the people that we, we know about and have seen in the movie. Um, you know, we settled the divorce out of court, and uh, that, was, uh, that was a you know, reasonable settlement. It cost a lot of money, as they always do, but, you know, it, w it wasn't too nasty. <clears throat> but then uh, after I sold my company, um, there was a custody challenge to try to get more child support. And, uh, and I just felt that that was unnecessary. There had been enough money uh, from the divorce itself to make that uh, a rounding error. And um, uh, when, I, when I said to the judge, you know, this was a completely uh, unnecessary set of hearings uh, because the amount of money involved is, is nowhere near what the divorce settlement was, and there's still plenty of that money left. Instead of him saying, yeah, you know, you're right, why don't you folks get out of here, you're wasting the court's time, he said, oh, no, Mr. Sword, you don't, you don't understand. Child support is one of the highest priorities of the state. It's something that we take very seriously and we have to look at, we have to analyze it. And I just felt like I was being fed a line of BS. Uh, and I was. Um, and, you know, we had all kinds of professionals involved in the thing. I mean, I was never accused of anything other than being a workaholic. Uh, but because of my apparent workaholic uh, habits, um, I was no longer able to take care of a child that I had had 50-50 custody of for the prior five years. So the whole thing was just a farce, and I uh, I kind of looked above the um, the fray and said, "Wow, this is uh, this is an industry. This is not fairness. This is not justice. This is an industry that's making money off of people," and it sparked the idea for making a movie. Well, it's funny that you say that because um, in a little clip from the movie, I remember the Scandinavian girl going, "I can't understand how the non-custodial parents out there feel like they should get rich." for just taking care of their own children. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. It's a very big cultural difference between the United States and Scandinavia. You know, I think the Scandinavians um, are more uh, balanced when it comes to male and female roles. Um, most women in Scandinavia work, and they just assume that um, there will be, you know, relatively equal sharing of, of the children. Um, you know, they, they have feelings like everybody else, and when there's a breakup, of course, there can be some hard feelings, and, you know, they may not like the other person, but the system doesn't throw gasoline on that fire like it does in the United States. You know, they don't go to court to get divorced. They just file a form with the government, and then they're divorced. They may have to wait six months if there's children involved, but other than that, um, they're divorced, and there's no lawyers in the process. Uh, if they need to divide assets, they go to an accountant and or a mediator and uh it, it's a relatively simple process now of course they don't have alimony after the divorce is over like we do in the united states uh, but i think that's one of the reforms that we should uh forward in the united states i think alimony is becoming a less and less of a factor as american women are you know more common in the workplace and i think if people are going to have alimony in the future it should be by a private agreement so that both parties know what they're getting into you know, in the United States, you get married, and all of a sudden, you know, your spouse divorces you, and you, you have to write a paycheck every month to that person for what? Whereas in Scandinavia, that would not be an automatic. In fact, there'd be no alimony unless you sat down and you negotiated an agreement with your spouse and said, okay, I understand you're going to sacrifice your career to raise the children, and you may need some compensation should the marriage end. Uh, I agree to that, and this will be the amount. It will be governed by this document that we both signed. Sure. In the United States, right. it's up to some ju judge who is one human being, uh, arbitrary, maybe biased, maybe 
doesn't like the way you part your hair or what you said to them or the fact that you didn't bow when you walked in the courtroom. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just never know what you're going to get. Sure. It's, it's so, very, it's, you definitely, it's a wild card. We'll say that. And the funny thing is, is um, before I saw this movie, I felt, I w- wasn't feeling so great about Massachusetts, but after seeing this movie and watching Ohio, Indiana, Texas, California, um, I feel so much better about where we stand in Massachusetts. Yeah. And by the way, Massachusetts has um, w- was the first state to uh, to modify that that alimony reform, right? That's right. Steve Hittner uh, was led that charge. Uh, have you interviewed First, Steve? We we haven't got to him yet. We've um we've hit a lot of people, but and, and I know he's right on my on my list of things to uh, people to to get on the show. Very important. Now his movement will turn nationwide. I have to believe. Yeah, you know Steve's a great guy, and he has been uh, advising people in New Jersey and Florida uh, on some of their efforts to get alimony reform. And one of the things that Steve has shared with me is that, and I don't know how he did this, but he somehow got the lawyers to back the reform effort. And uh, he said it would never have passed without the backing from the Massachusetts Bar and the lawyers. And I think what that means, unfortunately, is that uh, the reforms that did occur mean that lawyers have to be involved in an alimony uh, modification as Correct. well as the original you know, divorce. That's exactly and right. So I think the reason the lawyers backed it is because they thought, oh. There's more well, opportunity to make money. Right. It's more money yeah. than, you know, on going on the, the revisions as well as the setting it up. Billable, but, uh, billable yeah, hours. So billable I think hours. that might be a secret for some of these other states to somehow you know, include a provision where you know, the modification doesn't occur by the judge just looking something up at a table, it would actually require a, a hearing. And but I, you know, I think that's a frankly, and I love Steve, and I think I love what he did, but I think it's a, you know, a stepping stone to what real reform should be, which should be no no statutory alimony. Joe, we already have a couple of callers in the queue, so let's grab one on the line if I can get my attention of my uh, engineer. Sure. We have uh, Suzanne on the line. Is that correct? Hi, Suzanne. Sorry. <laughs> we gotta we gotta turn her pot up, Larry. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good, and yourself? Good. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, I have been following um, Divorce Corp up here in Maine, um, and I'm just very thankful that the um, film was produced and it's out there um, to be used as an educational tool. I just wanted to speak to the whole. Um, your intro bit about parental alienation, and I am one of the mothers who had my kids taken from me um, for no reason, no reason whatsoever. Well, if, if you could speak just a little louder, Suzanne. So what you're saying is you you uh, a victim of parental alienation up in Maine. Yes. Now, what is the justification with the judge at this juncture of the case? The justification from the judge perspective is that he just followed the GAL, we have a guardian at Lytham system up in Maine, what her recommendation was. And the judge didn't um, second guess it. He, he didn't question it. Um, and the whole thing that's most upsetting with me with my case in southern Maine was the judge who heard our, um, well, the judge that presided over our trial was also the judge that had been appointed to a committee within Maine to hear public input about GAL reform and family court reform, and I had been an outspoken um, constituent in reference to GAL and family court reform, and he was the judge that was there listening. On the so team. you feel like there was some sort of retaliation, possibly? Oh, most definitely. I, I went on the 14th of January to speak in a public forum, and on the 16th, my, my case had been settled. Joe, Joe any, any thoughts on this? Well, you know, unfortunately, Brian, I didn't hear much of what Susan said, but I do have some general thoughts on parental alienation. Could you summarize her? Sure, long sure. Yeah. Long and short of it is, is uh, Suzanne lives in Maine, and she's um, been alienated from her children. On the 14th of uh, a particular month, she um, attended and was a constituent with a with a, a GAL uh, rally, I guess, to be against 
or, or wasn't for it. And I guess the, her judge was for it, and she was a spokesperson against it. So two days later, she goes to court, and her children are literally taken away from her. And yeah. she feels that this is in retaliation to her position on the subject. Yeah. Okay, well, a couple of things, Suzanne. One is uh, you should, if you don't already know Jerry Collins up in Maine, he's a great advocate for parents and grandparents who have been the subject or the victims of parental alienation. Uh, the second thing is there was a Connecticut uh, reform effort that um, occurred earlier this year where they put some limitations on guardians at litem. Uh, and I think these GALs are probably the worst criminals of all in these family courts. Um, they tend to do very little, and they bill outrageous amounts of money for, for what they do. And there's, the parents have no recourse uh, when it comes to paying those bills, uh, because the guardian at litem tells the parents that the children are their clients, and therefore they can't share the billing information with the parents, the person is responsible for paying the bill. And I think that's, that's just ridiculous. That's the other thing is the GAL is going to be friends with the judge. And so if you say anything in front of a judge that's against the GALs, oftentimes that will turn the judge against you. Hmm. And what's horrible is that the GALs and other lawyers can make campaign contributions to these judges, um, not in every state, but in the states where there are elections. But if they can't make contrib campaign contributions, oftentimes they'll do things like, you know, throw them a party or socialize with them or give their husband or wife a job. In a, in a law firm or at a school or something like that, there's usually something behind the scenes when you see too cozy of a relationship between a GAL and a judge. Mm. I think it's a horrible system. I think there's incredible conflicts of interest. And I think what happens is if you're on the wrong side of that equation, uh, you, you'll get a judge that'll make these ridiculous uh, decisions that are not only monetary, but they take your children away from you, or they limit the amount of time with your children. And I think one of the most fundamental rights that, that people have is to, to be a part of their children's lives, to raise their children. Um, all of the studies, the recent studies, show that having two parents in a child's life is better than having one parent. The more time the children can be exposed to both parents, provided the parents are fit, there's nothing very strange or odd going on uh, or criminal going on. That the children are much better off, and, and these judges and gals, that, uh, GALs that take children away from one parent or to marginalize one parent, I think are just horrible people, and I, I don't know how they could sleep at night doing what they do. Uh, Suzanne, did you catch that? I, I, I did hear that, and, and, I, and I thank him for that input. I have been in conversation with Jerry Collins um, for quite some time now, um, but I guess part of what I want to do as far as joining on the bandwagon of public education is to dispel that myth of if you've lost all of your parental rights and all decision-making power and everything that every parent is, should have, it's not because of these images that you conjure up. I have no substance abuse issues. I've graduated from college. I work in a professional field. You know, I've, I've got everything in my corner to be one of the best parents that you can even imagine. But despite that, everything's been stripped of me. Well, and plus, plus, added. you 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 would not be up at this late of hour calling our show if this wasn't something that concerned you 24 right. hours a day. Well, the, 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 the thing that's even worse than having your rights taken away is when your teen is trying to live and move back in with you and they rob her of that right to the point where she became suicidal like if it hadn't been for the fact that i came close to losing my daughter her wanting to end her life over this whole process i would not be putting my public life i mean I would, i'm sorry i wouldn't be putting my private life out in, 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 in a public forum it's gotten to that point where it's that critical that we are losing people's lives people are dying Suicide. There's no, there's no question, Suzanne. Now, uh, we're a little bit up against the clock with each caller and, and email, but would you do me a favor? If you were on Facebook, you're on Facebook, I assume. Correct, yes. Um, and you know Divorce Corp, the Facebook. Yes, I, uh, there was a listing today that, that indicated our show, uh, yes. that Joe was going to be on our show. My name's on there, and uh, I liked uh, the comment. So if you want to send me a message uh, through that, I will try to get you some um some information, try to conjure up some things, and we can be in communication. 
That'd be lovely. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's no problem. And um, and uh, thanks for calling the show, and uh, we wish you good luck. Brian, thank you for doing this. Good luck, Suzanne. Good luck, Suzanne. Thank you, Joe. Thank you both of you. Thank you so much. Bye. No problem. So, Joe, this is just, you know, one step. I mean, and that's, you know, Maine is very different than Massachusetts. And, Joe, you know that. It's Every state's different. I don't know if they elect judges up there. I know Massachusetts does not. They're appointed here. So, mm-hmm. so, and I think that's really, I think it's really cut a lot of the corruption or the, the possible corruption that could be. Right. And do you agree with that, Joe? Well, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because, and you know, if I, I have a video blog called The Family Law Report, and you, you can get to it on our YouTube page. And I interviewed a lawyer from New York, Susan Sedembrino, and she studied this problem, and she said that both appointment and elections have their, their problems. The problem with the appointed judges is that they tend to be political uh, positions. Uh, so if you, you know, rub the right elbows and you do the right favors for the, the people in political power, then you get the appointment. Um, and oftentimes, uh, you know, these will go down along the party lines of whoever's in control at the time. So, um, you know, there's, there's flaws in that system. There's also flaws in the electoral process because... The public doesn't know what these judges are doing every day. There's no reporting system. You know, how do you know whether a judge is always going against the? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to pick a, uh, a gender, or I don't want to pick a, you know a racial profile. But there are judges that are biased, and they'll they'll go in favor of one party or another depending upon their biases. And Susan said that we don't get that information. They, they might give the, the child to, you know, one gender 90 percent of the time or the other the 90 percent of the time. And we don't know that as voters. And so she advocates a reporting system that reports on how the outcomes uh, are resolved in, in these cases that go before judges. They would wipe out the names so we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be revealing any confidential information to the parties. Uh, but we would see the voting record or the, the decision record of the judge, and we would look at things like how many times did that judge go against a particular law firm or in favor of a particular law firm, a law firm's client, or how many times did it go for the man, the, you know, the father or the mother, or how many times did it go for a particular ethnic group or whatever. And we would start to see that some of these judges are substantially biased, uh, and, and, and we'd be able to vote them out of office. So... Um, yes, I do think appointments get rid of uh, the problem that we have with not having transparency but um, in, in terms of elections, but I'm not sure it, it solves the problem at the end of the day because you have politicians who are now appointing these people. Tony would like uh, to ju- I think we need transparency. I think we need sure. to see how, what these judges are doing and the kinds of decisions they're making so we know whether we want them or not. And yes, and we're talking to Joe Sorge of uh, director of Divorce Corp. Tony, you had a, something to talk about. Well, I mean, I think that there should be a way of monitoring the judges too in in cases like this because I like Suzanne's case there. I don't think that it's right that you know that her daughter for no reason was she stripped her rights from her from her, from her uh, daughter. So I I mean I I don't know any much about divorce, but I do know friends of mine that whose parents have gotten divorced and how it's impacted their lives. And, you know, and, and the, it's a tough thing. You know? I mean, I, 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 yes, this is Gabe, Joe. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, you know, we know that with politicians, we can see their voting records. So I think there's a good parallel argument to be made to see how the judges rule. You know, and not only the biases exist, but as you indicated before, there's almost as if it's a similar to a lobbying situation where if uh, this judge is in bed with uh, this constituent or this constituent's law firm or this certain um, group, then that can certainly color their decisions. I mean, Suzanne talks about a decision being made just two days after she appeared and spoke vocally against the judge's position, not knowing that that would be the judge was going to be there. So to me, I think we should be able to see their judging records and get a sense mm-hmm. of what side they fall on these arguments. I think it makes perfect yep. sense. And and I'm going to agree with, and I'm going to agree with you Joe on 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 the as far as the law firms with the judges. I I agree with you 100% on that because I have a friend of mine right now that's going through a divorce and for some reason, you know, he just keeps getting dragged into court and the 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 law firm that's representing his ex-wife is 
you know, I guess, you know, in with the judge eh, because mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I, the way I feel because he just can't win any battle with this with this judge and he and he this has been dragged out now for him for almost four years. Yep, and that's a common complaint amongst people that you know sometimes they go in and they just tell the truth and they think they're going to you know encounter a, a situation where they they get justice and all the decisions go against them. And, and we're not talking about drug addicts or criminals. These are just regular people. And what they oftentimes find out is that the judge used to work at the law firm that the opposing lawyer now works at. Right. They used to be buddies, golfing buddies, or that that law firm is making significant campaign contributions to that judge or throwing fundraisers, or the judge's wife works as a legal secretary at the law firm that the opposing lawyer works at. I mean, there, there's so many behind-the-scenes connections, and, you know, these people are a very close-knit society. Um, there's a lot of overlap. They go to the same law schools. They clerk in the same places. They, they work through the same law firms. And, you know, there's a, it's just human nature. I don't, I don't, you know, a lot of people are so angry at these, these people, but I, I understand it. You know, they, they, they make friendships. They get to know people, and then... Then they trust people, and when you know an attorney comes in a courtroom, and the judge knows that attorney and trusts that attorney, and the attorney says, "You know, Your Honor, the other side is a bum. Uh, you need to do something." They do it, and so we need to make sure that our judges are. You know, you can't know all of the potential behind-the-scenes uh, relationships, but what you can do is monitor their decisions. You know, there's one law firm in California that brags that they win 90% of their lots of their cases in court. Well, how do you win 90% of your cases? Do they have all the best lawyers in the world? Or, do or the best cases. Pick, yeah. Do they know how to pick the winning side right. all the time? Right. I mean, how do you know that your client is going to be the winning argument? You don't. You don't. You don't. So no. the only way you can win 90% of the time is you're influencing the system. You know what, Joe? Right. We're just scratching the surface on this, but we got to take a quick commercial break. We're going to be right back, um, and we'll get you uh, 781-837-4900 for the callers. Uh, Joe, we'll get you back on the back side of this, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to Friends with Benefits, 95.9 WATD. Friends with Benefits will return on 95.9 WATD. Giggity, giggity. Giggity, goo. Stick around. Experience the Atlantis Sports Club difference. Atlantis Sports Club and Spas are located throughout Massachusetts, including locations in Braintree, Holbrook, and Hyannis, featuring state-of-the-art cardiovascular and strength training equipment, plus indoor and outdoor pools and full-service spas. Atlantis offers something for everyone. How about Zumba, spinning, and strength training classes, swim lessons for the kids, or a luxurious spa treatment? Your Atlantis membership allows access to all locations. Atlantis Braintree, located off the high Highway across from the South Shore Plaza features beautiful indoor and outdoor pools. You'll find the newest Holbrook location next to Stop and Shop with plenty of parking and a spacious floor plan. Take a mini vacation at Atlantis Sports Club and Spa in Hyannis. Play golf, then relax by the resort-style pool. End the day with a relaxing treatment at the spa at Atlantis. Mention this ad and receive 20% off any spa treatment. Experience the Atlantis difference today. Visit AtlantisSportsClubs.com and book your tour today. Fun, clear, fast, easy, cosmetic. Just six months. Six month braces. Get started today. Call Dr. Will at Lux Smile in Marshfield at 781 399 4920. The law office of Philip M. Markella is a full service law firm with a focus on family and divorce law. When your marriage dissolves, Phil's office will help you navigate those often rough waters. They'll represent your interests with respect and compassion. The law office of Philip M. Markella also assists with estate planning, real estate transactions, and adoptions. Get in touch with the law office of Philip M. Markella, 19 Depot Street, Duxbury. Their telephone number, 781-934-7977. 781-934-7977. And on the web at MarkellaLaw.com. That's M-A-R-K-E-L-L-A law.com 
Hey, it's Brian Stratton, and I'd like to talk to you about Mamma Mia's Restaurant. With five convenient locations around the South Shore, you don't have to drive far to enjoy delicious Italian cuisine, just the way you like it. Whether you're in Carver, Plymouth, Hanover, Kingston, or the new location in Green Harbor, Mamma Mia's is something to please any palate. Catering, gift cards, and takeout are available seven days a week. Contact Mamma Mia's online at mamamias.net. That's mamamias.net. Why pay too much for insurance? Instead, call the Good Ale Company for a free personalized insurance estimate. A family-owned and operated insurance company for over 50 years, they were just awarded the best insurance agency on the South Shore in the Wicked Local Reader's Choice Awards. The Good Ale Company is committed to offering high-value, low-cost insurance personalized to meet your needs. Call the Good Ale Company at 781-383-0787 and ask for Craig Martin. Located on 3A in Cohasset, the Good Ale Company works hard to find you the highest quality insurance at the lowest price possible while providing customer service with a personal touch. The South Shore's breaking news weather and traffic station. 95.9 WATD-FM Marshfield and 95.9 WATD.com. Divorce attorney Mark Green. Mark, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty well, actually, until I started listening to your show about 10 minutes ago. Beautiful. What do you got? Well, I was really stunned at, at how much miscommunication and misinformation. Beautiful. What do you got? Well, uh, all you need to do is play back the tape, see what your opinion is of a of divorce attorney. That's an opinion, Mark. I understand that, but you... Hey, well, this is a this is an opinion-based program. I understand that, but usually opinion is based somewhat on fact. Beautiful. What do you got? It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Well, your opinion was there are a bunch of snakes. That's, that's, if you, look, you have, I don't know where you come from. I don't know what you do. Exactly. You probably listen to Fox, too. The bottom line is, do you think the system is set up correctly? Uh, I, and once again, I'm not so sure what, what you mean by system. The court system. What, what do you mean? You, know, you, you said you're an attorney. You don't know what a system is. It's a court system. Okay. Have you been listening to the show? You can continue to talk, or you can listen for just a second. Well, you listen. Talk, let them talk. Can you name the judges in Plymouth County? Sure. You want me to start? Judge uh, Sebatis, Judge Roberts, Judge Stanton. Those three, right? Keep going. You're wait, wait, wait. Five. There's only four. Who's coaching you? You don't even know who the courts are. You don't know who the judges are, and you come up with these... I just named three out of the four judges. What are you talking about? <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you know, wow, that was like the I first. Said, uh, that was the first. Like, there's a divorce attorney for you. Uh, <laughs> argument I've ever heard. I mean, like, wow, that was. That well, that's what it's saying. Mind. So sometimes it can get that confrontational. Sometimes when you're a. I would want to just pay money just to tell him to shut up. Please, won't you be my neighbor? Hi, television neighbor. I'm glad we're together again. <laughs> 95.9 WATD Friends with Benefits. Uh, Joe, you're still on the line? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, okay. So, sorry about that little excerpt from the end. That was a call from yeah, last you week. You should have let me go head-to-head with that divorce attorney. <laughs> <laughs> you're one week late. You know, and we were arguing about the little clips we played from your movie. He didn't like. Uh, okay. He didn't like the depiction. I, I came up with a comment, and you know what? It's a very generalization. But I said seventy percent of divorce attorneys, in my opinion, are, are snakes. The, are snakes, and, and right. I don't tr- trust them or value them. But there's there is a thirty percent that I think are really, you know, the good the, worth, the, worthwhile. Worthwhile. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a there's a joke that says that ninety nine percent of attorneys ruin it for the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I've heard that one. Uh, no, but let me let me just say that I, you know I actually say I don't agree with you. I think most attorneys are good people. I think it's a bad system. I think the laws are messed up. I think the courts are messed up. But I think they're human beings that are just dealing with a very bad set of laws and, and no checks and balances and no oversight. And what happens is the culture has become perverted to the point where these things, these people think they're doing good things for the public. When in reality, they're, they're hurting a lot of people, and they don't even see it, and they don't even know it. I can't, I can't say that they're bad people for not seeing it and not knowing it, because I've seen good people act badly in other situations as well. And, and, and so I, I agree have, with you, what Joe. What do we have to fix the system? It's not, a much, you know, it's not slapping the wrist of, of the people within the system. It's fixing the system 
so that the checks and balances are there so that they won't won't do these things. Joe, I th- I think the system's too far gone. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I think it's at the point of no return right now. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's at the point of no return, but I do think it's almost impossible to reform it. Uh, we're trying, you know, I'm organizing a, a reform conference in Washington, D.C., November 15th and 16th, to try to reform the family laws. But I'll tell you, to try to get people to pay attention to this subject and get real uh, political uh, weight behind it is extremely challenging for a couple mm-hmm. of reasons. One is most people don't want to talk about this subject because it's like either they went through a bad divorce or they're in a marriage right now and they don't even they don't want to jinx it, um, you know, or... Uh, the people that really do change the laws don't want to hear about it because they're they're making money off of it and they don't want it exposed. They don't want the bad aspects of it exposed because that's going to make them look bad or it's going to hurt one of their friends' income. So it's, it's, it's interesting, Joe. Right? It's very interesting. And you know, and, and circling back into the the good lawyer bad lawyer thing. I, I'm not saying they're bad lawyers. They don't know the law. I just question a lot of their integrity. They might come into this game with good intentions. They may come in with the right reasons. But I'll tell you. Um, first of all, the, the the real problem I have, and I don't know if it's um, if this is the, the the restraining order law, which it just seems, especially it's rampant in Massachusetts. I know the judge doesn't have a lot of wiggle room with that they err on the side of caution but lawyers beat that to death uh, for their female uh, clients quite a bit and a lot of the time it's very unwarranted it's just a way to get leverage on the case thoughts yeah i think that's i'm sorry go ahead no thoughts your thoughts yeah i I think it's a horrendous practice i mean if, if an attorney is advising their client to fake domestic violence or to make false accusations or to exaggerate i think that's horrendous behavior um that that should never be tolerated um trust me it's common we we interviewed attorneys that say that it happens all the time all the time yeah i mean some of the domestic violence people get down on me for bringing that up um but i didn't make it up you know when we interviewed people for this movie a lot of them said look it's a strategy that's used in court and you get there's big advantages of it the judge will give you the house the right. judge will make sure that you get the kids. When you get the kids, it doubles your child support because if you have 100% custody, you get twice as much child support as if you have 50% custody. Right, and I think and, 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 right. So no, no, there's completely... these economic incentives to do it, and you know, just let me. I know I'm, I'm rambling. No, I'm but, sorry, Joe. I don't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to jump. No, no, that's right. But there, you know, the 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 thing is, the, you know, what how the lawyers justify what they do. They say that they are they have an obligation to zealously advocate for their client. And I think that may work in criminal court where you've got someone who's accused of murder and they're going to go to jail or the electric chair, and you try as hard as you can to get them off. But it has no place in family court, in my, my opinion, that, you know, we don't have criminals generally in family court. The mom or the dad are not criminals. We're not trying to convict someone. We're just trying to figure out how to repair this family, how to get it in a situation where they can coexist in separate households, share the children, and everybody turns out okay. And that doesn't belong in the adversarial system where you have a zealous advocate trying to prove that the other side is a bad person. Joe, that was perfectly said. What I was about to get to was... I, you can you can understand the attorney's role to be the utmost advocate for his or her client in every single scenario. However, to paint the picture of someone as a uh, a, a wife beater or to make it out as though a restraining order uh, is a matter of necessity simply as a strategy to win a case when it's not based on merit at all can ruin someone's life forever. That's right. Forever, and it, and, and it is and don't, no means to interrupt, but it, this is uh, an expertise. I've seen this down that courthouse, and those poor, poor, those great judges around here, which there's a lot of them. And I don't mean I'm not saying that um, because I'm trying to groom or kiss up to anybody, because I really believe around this area in Massachusetts, we have some pretty uh, competent uh, family law judges, but. They really have to make very, very, very tough decisions. Very. And I'll tell you, probably, Joe, probably 100% of the time, those uh, restraining orders, they're, they're given out. They don't, they don't take any chances. 
Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's the. And it's not only just restraining orders. A scenario, Joe, w- w- during my uh, around the time two thousand, I was separating from my the children of my mother. I wasn't even married. Okay, I had three boys, and all the le- all we had already agreed on everything. The one mistake I made, okay, was I left the house in my name. I let her stay in my house. Her attorney came back and said. Don't pay the mortgage. I know you're getting your child support, but don't pay it because it's in his name. He'll ruin his own credit if he doesn't pay your mortgage along with your child mm-hmm. support. So now yep. here he is giving her advice to put my kid's house in a very affluent town into foreclosure. And you mm-hmm. know what happened was this thing up until 24 hours before the auction, that thing was saved at the 11th hour from mm-hmm. a fam- family relative. That's the advice. Uh, do you Do you feel good about that? I mean, well, you know, you, you, all of us can recognize the, the, the problems with that kind of advice and that kind of behavior. The, the problem is, though, that these lawyers work within a culture where they, they drink the juice of zealous advocacy. And they tell each other, well, you, you're, you, it's ethical to do whatever you can to help your client. And I don't think it's ethical in family court. And that's where, that's where they go wrong. So that's where they cross the line. We have, we actually have a caller on the line, Joe. Uh, it's a divorce attorney, not just a divorce attorney, but it does a lot of attorney. Phil Markella. Phil, how are you? Hey, Brian. Is this the um, is this a Daryl Hall interview? No, this isn't the time. Oh, I want to talk to Hall. Hall and Oates are next week. Oh, all right, I'll call back. <laughs> no, it's, how you doing? Say hi to Joe Sorge for me. Hey, Joe. You? How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm well. I tell you, I I, I watched your movie. Uh, when, when, when did I watch it? Monday? I don't know when you watched it, Phil, but it must have been this week. I, 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 yeah, I watched it. I think it was Monday. And I, I was riveted to the screen. And when it was over, all I could say was, thank God I practice in Massachusetts. Which is, a, which, which is, which is rare uh, before we saw this movie. I thought before this movie, I was pretty down on Mass. After this movie, I, I felt a great sense of relief. Mm-hmm. As you should, as you should. The system in Massachusetts, though flawed, they're all they all are. For every point that you brought up uh, earlier, I've been listening on my while well, I was while I've been driving. Um, but you know, it, it, it is it is still flawed. It's still run by people, and as long as there's people involved, it's going there's going to be flaws. Uh, but mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes, I happen to think, in my experience, that it's been pretty fair. I think it's at the end of the day it's pretty fair. I think we have a I think we have a very good well intentioned divorce bar. Uh you know, there are the exceptions that prove the rule, obviously, as it is in every case. Uh but I think most attorneys uh want to do the right thing. Um there are attorneys that look at divorce cases as annuities. Mm-hmm. The gift that keeps on giving. Um but for the most part, at least in my experience, uh, everyone is every, everyone is working hard to do the right thing, and I think the judges are as well. Yeah, Joe, we're going to have to t- we're going to have to change the movie to this problems in forty nine states, not not fifty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, well, you know, Phil, that's, can, I, can I tell you just a quick story? You know, I used to be in medicine. Why well, I, I never practiced, but I was in medical school. I was at Harvard Medical School, and we were at one of the VA hospitals. And one of the uh, residents told a joke. He said. Um, you know, what's the difference between doing research on a vet versus doing research on a dog? And the answer was, uh, you start feeling sorry for the dogs that over time. And that showed me how, how, how callous and insensitive people within a system can become. Right. And I, I completely believe you that you and the other attorneys and the judges think you are doing good things for people. I, 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 and in fact, in probably I would even say in the majority of cases you do. The problem is that there's a very large minority, a plurality of people who are not getting justice, and, and you just don't know it because you're either not seeing it from their perspective or the culture you are within is making jokes just like these, this resident made the joke about the best. Um, it just becomes, you know, whenever you are institutionalized and you're in a system, you become numb to the human aspect of it. Mm. And I see it from the outside. I hear it from the victim stories. And it's a very different world. And I would just, you know, I, I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not saying the people you, you work with are bad people. I just think that human nature tends 
to protect itself when it's seeing so much adversity and so much pain and suffering to the point where we, we put it into a different box and we don't feel it. We see it, but we don't feel it and we don't realize the impact of our actions. Yeah, there's no question, Joe, and and that is that was a great gr- great statement there. Um, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me comment on that. Um, a, I agree with you, a hundred percent. You're right. We're sitting in one chair, and our client, the litigant, is sitting in another chair. And I get it. It's at the end of the day, we're going to pack up our briefcase, and we're going to go home. You know, to whatever our home life is, and they're going to go home to their problems. And they're going to go home to their empty bank account. I get it. I completely get it. And they're going to go home to a house that doesn't have any kids in it. I understand completely. I understand that 100%. Um, and, that's, and that's not lost on me. Uh, and, and, and often I feel that if you're going to be an attorney practicing divorce, you probably ought to go through one first yourself. Hmm. To, that, to, that's to a truly, good idea. To truly appreciate it. That you, it, should be, it should be a requirement. Um. And there's nothing he can do about that because of the system. It is, it is an yeah. adversarial system, and he can debate up and down whether it should be or not. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, Phil. You know, it's funny, and I, I don't want to get too far off track, but uh, another thing in the movie in Divorce Corp, by the way, um, and Joe, this will, this will uh, kind of uh, put a little bit of fodder into your statement. When I put this out on my Facebook today, I had received probably a dozen private messages from people stating they had gotten awful, awful treatment in the state of Massachusetts by judges and lawyers. So that goes to prove that you're right. You're right. There is. Well, there, there, are, thousands, there are thousands of comments on our Facebook page on the divorce. Yeah. Now, look, I mean, we're, we're getting, you know, all the victims that are appearing and making comments on our page, but, but literally thousands of comments. This is, not, this is not just the five victims we had in the movie. This is something that's affecting thousands of people if not more speaking of the movie where can people go to see it well it's on itunes right now you could rent it for four dollars and 99 cents or you can order it as a dvd through amazon.com it's it's the best four dollars and 99 cents you'll ever spend yeah I, i've got it i mean it really if, if you've been divorced or not or you, because everybody knows people who have gone through divorce and 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 phil uh, earlier in the show we were talking to joe about um you know the real <laughs> and and phil and i talked about this off the air a couple days ago joe is uh the child custody evaluators in the gols, GOLs uh, yeah and and those the, those to me, probably are the biggest criminals in the whole system. Get, and, mm. and Joe, uh, your opinion once again on that? Well, well I think, you know, I if you look at it in the are, context of the I, example, I, I, I think the Joe, family court should get Joe. out of the business oh. of taking children away from one parent or the other. I mean, I, I believe in equal shared parenting unless the parents agree otherwise to a different arrangement. Um, uh, you know, I mean, if one of the parents is a drug addict or irresponsible or a criminal, of course you don't expose the children to that kind of parenting. But when we're talking about 99% of the cases where we have, you know, just normal people, yeah, we all have flaws and all that, but, you know, we're, overall we're normal people. The court should not be deciding that there's one parent should dominate the situation over the other. Um, you know, I went through a 50-50 custody arrangement for many years, and it worked out fine. We went one week in one house, one week in the other. Yes, are, there, are, there are the occasions where someone moves away, and then you're out of state. I mean, I have a solution for that. If you move away, you lose your kid. You know, <laughs> there you go. Around, there you have it. Stick Sounds around sensible. and you get your kid. Move away, well, then you have no rights anymore. Oh, that right. makes sense. Um, Sounds well, sensible. Um, you know, it, it, to speak to that point, you got to understand, to a certain extent, and um, I believe this was touched on in your movie, to a certain extent, I won't speak for any other jurisdiction, but in Massachusetts, child support, you know, can be based on how much, I don't know, what percentage of custody that you have. So then, so then that mm. becomes a weapon as well. That becomes a tool, I should say. Right, little it's bags of money. The little kids, right. the kids, are little, little bags, bags of money. money. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Which was a know, best statement out of her. If it's, if it's fifty-fifty, you take the income of both parents. You know, and you calculate the child support based on both party giving, one both party receiving, and then one of the differences mm. goes to whoever makes less money. Yeah, I, you know, it is an adversarial relationship, but to me, the familial relationship is the one that's most important. And when the when they're looked at as numbers on a balance sheet, there's something fundamentally wrong with how we're treating these families. Well, I, I, I concur. I concur. I, I, I can't disagree with that. Well, Joe, you know, I think 
I think child support should be the same amount that we pay foster families to take care of kids. I mean, that's a, that's a marketplace. That's a fair market value on what people are willing to uh, accept in terms of monetary compensation in order to take care of children. Mm. So that should be, I think it should be a fixed amount, and it should be equal to the amount that we pay foster families, and it should only be paid in situations where one of the parents, where, where the parents do not agree to 50-50, they agree to a different arrangement. Hmm. Um, if both so we're putting a lot of us out of work now, Joe. I don't know. This is a sign of fact, Now I know what the accountant felt like. Well, you heard. I'm sorry, about. Joe. I, I missed what Joe said. What, Joe? I said if both parents want to want to put in 50 percent effort into taking care of the kids, then they should be allowed to, and there should be no child support. But well, if you know what? Let me tell you something. Doesn't want or can't put in 50 percent of the time then you pay the other parent, just like you're paying a foster family for taking care of the children. Yeah, Phil, what, what, what were you going to say? Well, you know, for the most part, you know, we, have, we have the guidelines. We have the child support guidelines, and it, it's a fixed formula. And, you know, there's very, little, there's very little deviation from that. But I tell you, the judges love nothing more than to see a couple, particularly in this, in the, in this era where, you know, you know, every second house is, you know, is, 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 a, is, a, is a fractured family. Um, judges love nothing more than to see a husband and a wife come in who have their act together, who have their priorities together, and have an agreement that is equitable to both parties and, most importantly, uh, keeps the kids in a stable, healthy family uh, situation. They love that. They love that here in Massachusetts. Well, that's right, Phil. And like I said, we, you saw the movie. I saw the movie. A bunch of us have seen the movie. It's different in every state. It is it's almost every like state. That's, that's each another thing I want to say. Well, Phil, as, well, as, Phil. As, as informative as this movie is, I really don't want people who watch it or who are listening to walk away thinking, "Oh my God, is this what's going to happen to me when I go into court in Massachusetts?" Most likely not. It's not going to. Well, uh, Phil, you know what? Each state is almost like a different country. And, and these set of uh, there is probably a schematic or a blueprint, but you know mm-hmm. we are up against the clock. Uh, Joe, one more plug for your conference. Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, you can uh, get information about it on our website, which is uh, divorcecorp.com. C O R P divorcecorp.com. The conference is in Washington D.C. November fifteenth and sixteenth. We have uh, speakers uh, coming from all over the country. We have law professors coming. We have a professor uh, coming from Stockholm, Sweden, who has studied over 20,000 children in in Sweden uh, under shared parenting arrangements. Um, We have mediators. We have uh, professors of psychology. We have people representing the domestic violence interests. We have people representing parental alienation interests. And our hope is, our, our hope is that if we can get these people in a room and not kill each other, um, that we'll be able to hear what their different uh, issues are and hopefully come up with rational solutions to, you know, the current situation. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a, a strong believer that the adversarial system is, is inappropriate for family courts, that there, that there should be another way to do these things, but I don't think we're ever going to get there until we agree on, you know, how to resolve the monetary issues in a way that we don't have to have a battle in order to resolve the monetary issue. That's a great so, way to end the, a great way to end the show, Joe. Thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, we're going to have this on YouTube for any listeners who want to hear the rebroadcast. It'll be uh, under my name, Brian Stratton, with a FWB on the end of that. Joe, thanks so much. Appreciate it. And also, Phil Markella, thanks for calling in. Uh, you are thanks for having me. Thank yeah, you I, for I, having I, me as a guest. All right, we're going to go to commercial break. You're listening to 95.9 WATD, Friends with Benefits. Hello, everybody. This is Graham Nash from the Hollies and from Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Right now, you're listening to me on my friend Brian Stratton's show. It's on WATD 95.9. Keep listening. Hello, folks. Ed Brown from The Snug. Known as the home of the perfect pint, The Snug is located in historic downtown Hingham at 116 North Street. A quaint yet exciting Irish-style pub, we offer breakfast on the weekends, lunch and dinner seven days a week with daily lunch and dinner specials. The Snug features a state-of-the-art European draft system with 14 European and domestic microbrews on tap. If you appreciate acoustic classic rock, we feature a variety of local musicians. Join us every Monday at 5.30 for our traditional Irish session. 
Visit us online at snugpub.com for our complete entertainment schedule. Remember, the Snug is a place where good friends and families come together to enjoy great food, live music, and always the perfect pint. Experience the Atlantis Sports Club difference. Atlantis Sports Club and Spas are located throughout Massachusetts, including locations in Braintree, Holbrook, and Hyannis, featuring state-of-the-art cardiovascular and strength training equipment, plus indoor and outdoor pools and full-service spas. Atlantis offers something for everyone. How about Zumba, spinning, and strength training classes, swim lessons for the kids, or a luxurious spa treatment. Your Atlantis membership allows access to all locations. Atlantis Braintree, located off the highway across from the South Shore Plaza, features beautiful indoor and outdoor pools. You'll find the newest Holbrook location next to Stop and Shop with plenty of parking and a spacious floor plan. Take a mini vacation at Atlantis Sports Club and Spa in Hyannis. Play golf, then relax by the resort-style pool. End the day with a relaxing treatment at the Spa at Atlantis. Mention this ad and receive 20% off any any spa treatment. Experience the Atlantis difference today. Visit AtlantisSportsClubs.com and book your tour today. The law office of Philip M. Markella is a full-service law firm with a focus on family and divorce law. When your marriage dissolves, Phil's office will help you navigate those often rough waters. They'll represent your interests with respect and compassion. The law office of Philip M. Markella also assists with estate planning real estate transactions, and adoptions. Get in touch with the law office of Philip M. Markella, 19 Depot Street, Duxbury. Their telephone number, 781-934-7977. 781-934-7977. And on the web at markellalaw.com. That's M-A-R-K-E-L-L-A law.com. Fun, clear, fast, easy, cosmetic. Just six months. Six-month braces. Get started today. Call Dr. Will at Lux Smile in Marshfield at 781-399-4920. Impressions Detailing of Duxbury is your number one source for auto detailing on the South Shore. Owner Mike Ferreira and his staff have years of auto detailing experience. Located next to Jeeps and Buggies on 1474 Tremont Street of Duxbury, Impressions Detailing Detailing also provides window tinting and headlight restoration. They service sedans, small SUVs, and large SUVs or trucks. Contact Impressions Detailing at 781-934-2935 or by email at impressionsdetail at yahoo.com. That telephone number again, 781-934-2935. Impressions Detailing of Duxbury. Ninety-five nine WATD friends with benefits. Uh, hey, thanks, guys on the round table, Gabe. Hey, man, it's good to be here as always. Tony, always a pleasure, Brian. Thanks for coming out, Tony from Bella's. I'm getting ready for your new place. Can't wait. And, uh, uh, I can't wait. You know, it's, it's just weeks away. So we're weeks away from opening up the uh, 106. Route 106 Halifax. in Halifax, and also we're weeks away from opening up 106 in East Bridgewater. Excellent. You're listening to 95.9 WATD Friends of Benefits. We'll see you later.